All right, so we're going to take a look at uh, the 2008 AP Stats Form B um, free response questions, and we're going to look at question number four. So I'm going to read this question off here. Uh, a researcher wants to conduct a study to test whether listening to soothing music for 20 minutes helps to reduce diastolic blood pressure in uh, patients with high blood pressure compared to simply sitting quietly in a noise-free environment for 20 minutes. Uh, 100 patients with high blood pressure at a large medical clinic are available to participate in the study. So um, the question asks us, question A, asks us to propose a design for this study for the two treatments. Now there's actually a couple options um, when you're asked for proposals and discussions and things like that. Um, sometimes there are a couple options. In this case, there are a couple options for the design. Uh, I'm going to write down all the options and write down some features of each uh, and go through and discuss uh, what type of test we would use. Now, the three options for design on this experiment are paired design, matched pairs, or uh, completely random design. Uh, we're going to go through each and see. Uh, I believe the paired design is actually the best, and uh, the AP stats graders uh, referred to that as the best um, design. But uh, we're going to go through features of each because each can earn you full credit on the uh, question. So the paired design, uh, what's going to happen is each subject is going to receive each of the treatments uh, in separate times. So in order to randomize uh, each subject getting each treatment separately, uh, we're just going to flip a coin, essentially, uh, heads or tails, and anyone who gets heads, the first thing that they're going to do is sit in the noise-free environment, and then uh, after a significant amount of time between, uh, uh, between tests, they're going to then listen to soothing music. So uh, once you've flipped the coin and you've uh, given each student, uh, excuse me, each subject, each treatment, once with the noise free, and then after a significant amount of time between each test, once with the soothing music, uh, you're then going to compare the data. You are going to uh, subtract the uh, pressure in the uh, noise free environment, the pressure before, uh, from the pressure after, as well as the pressure from the soothing music, pressure before. Minus, or excuse me, pressure after minus pressure before. So you find out uh, the pressure after minus the pressure before in the noise-free environment 
is going to be the uh, going to give you the average difference uh, in blood pressure from before and after, uh, and then pressure after minus pressure before is going to give you the average difference uh, for blood pressure when l listening to soothing music, um, and then you want to subtract these two values. So we've gotten to the point where this is the value that we're actually looking for. Um, we're interested in finding out if uh, the average change in blood pressure listening to soothing music is significantly larger than the average change in blood pressure uh, after a noise-free environment for 20 minutes. Um, so we need to find out if that's significantly greater than zero. Um, in, in order to do that, um, we're going to run a paired t-test. So we can see why the paired design is such a great um, uh, design for this experiment. Uh, each subject is being subjected to each treatment, um, so we can see how individuals respond differently uh, to the treatments, um, and we're also randomly assigning the treatments um, which the subject gets first, and then after a significant time in between, uh, which the subject then gets. Um, and then we find out the uh, average difference in blood pressure before and after for each the noise free and the soothing music and then we do a little subtraction for the uh, difference the mean difference after listening to music and the mean difference after uh, sitting in the noise free environment and we run a paired t-test on all of those values for all the hundred subjects and uh, we can find out if that value is significantly greater than zero then we can possibly conclude that uh, soothing music does indeed reduce that blood pressure uh, as compared to uh, just sitting in a noise-free environment. So now we're going to take a look at the uh, matched pairs design. So with a matched pairs design, what's a little bit different about this is each uh, subject isn't going to get each treatment. Um, we're going to pair, uh, we're going to measure the blood pressure for each uh, subject and then we're going to pair the top two blood pressures together and then the next two, so the third and fourth highest, and then the fifth and sixth highest blood pressures, and so on. Um, so we're going to have uh, very similar subjects paired together. So after we pair off all of the subjects, we're going to have 50 separate pairs of subjects. And then uh, again, we need to assign each pair, uh, each member of the group, excuse me, to a certain uh, test group. So we need to flip a coin and, you know, we have subject one. We'll flip a coin, and if it lands on heads, then we'll put them in the noise-free. Uh, if it lands on tails, we'll put them in the soothing music, and then their partner gets the opposite treatment. So uh, again, we're going to uh, do something pretty similar for each subject. We're going to measure the pressure before and the pressure after, find out what the mean difference is, 
Uh, the difference here is that not every single person is going to get a mean difference for both the noise-free and the soothing music. Um, the pairs are each going to get one of these. So we can see here uh, that this isn't as strong as our first one because we're only doing P1 after minus P1 before to find out what the average difference in blood pressure for subject one is in a noise-free environment. And then with their partner, uh, we're finding out um, what the uh, blood pressure is before and after and uh, subtracting before from after and finding out um, the average difference uh, for only that um, subject for the soothing music. Uh, so we can see that this subject or this test design is a little bit more limited than our first one. Um, but again, we're going to end up running a paired T test on this. And again, uh, the paired t-test is asking us um, whether uh, the average uh, change in blood pressure after listening to soothing music minus the average change in blood pressure after uh, sitting in a noise-free environment is greater than zero, and that's the whole point of the study. Um, so we finished writing out the description for our match pairs design. Uh, we're going to move on to a completely randomized sample now. So a uh, completely random sample uh, is really easy. Uh, we're going to assign a number to each of our subjects. Uh, we're, we can just say 1 through 100. So. Uh, we're assigning 1 to 100 to each of our sub 100 subjects, and we're going to want 50 in each test group. Um, 50 are going to be in the group that get the uh, soothing music, and 50 are going to be in the uh, group that listens to the noise-free environment. And this is obviously weaker, again, than the uh, pair design because each student is, or each, each subject is not getting each treatment. So once we have 50 in the noise-free environment, uh, we're just going to take the other 50 subjects um, and put them in the soothing music environment. Uh, and then we're going to do similar calculations that we did in uh, the first two designs. We're going to find out the uh, average difference in blood pressure from listening to uh, soothing music uh, before and after and the average difference in blood pressure from sitting in the noise-free environment for 20 minutes uh, before and after.
So this is the first group that we, we chose, and this is the second group that we chose. Uh, again, this isn't as strong because uh, not every subject is getting every treatment. But uh, again, we're gonna just subtract the uh, average difference in blood pressure of the soothing environment minus the average difference in blood pressure after being in a noise-free environment. Uh, and we're gonna run this time a two sample uh, T-test. So again, we're going to run the two sample T test to find out uh, if the uh, average difference in blood pressure from listening to soothing music minus, uh, excuse me, this should be the average difference uh, in the noise free. Uh, and we're going to run that two sample T test to see if that's greater than zero. Um, so what's great about this uh, first part of this question is that I've now gone through three different subject designs. Each of these can be used and uh, you can get full credit for the uh, response on the exam as long as you detail out exactly uh, how you're running the experiment, making sure that everything is completely random, um, et cetera. So now we're gonna move on to uh, part B of this question. Um, part B of this question states uh, that the null hypothesis for the study is that there is no difference between um, listening to uh, soothing music and listening to uh, noise free and sitting in a noise free environment for 20 minutes. So the null hypothesis is no difference. Um, the alternative hypothesis as written up here is that the mean reduction uh, in blood pressure after sitting in the uh, music environment is actually gonna be greater than the mean uh, reduction of um, sitting in the uh, the noise-free environment. Um, so we're gonna describe uh, type one and type two errors in the context of the problem and the consequences for the clinic. Um, we know that for the clinic, if they reject the null and they accept that the mean reduction uh, after listening to music is greater than the mean reduction after sitting in the quiet environment, then they're gonna actually offer uh, free music therapy to all of their blood pressure patients. So I'm gonna make out a chart here just to remind you the type one and type two errors. So uh, our possibilities here are we're gonna reject the null or fail to reject the null hypothesis and then the possibilities for the actual um, truth of the null are either the null is true and there is no difference or the null is false and there is a difference. So if we reject the null but the null hypothesis is true, that is a type one error or a false positive. False positive because we uh, think that our alternative hypothesis is true, uh, where it is actually not. We find it to be true, but it really is. Um, if we reject the null and the null is false, this is a correct uh, interpretation of the problem. If we fail to reject the null and the null is true, again, we did the problem out correctly 
and then a type two error is gonna be if the null is false and we fail to reject it or otherwise known as a false negative. So now let's take a look at these errors in the context of this particular problem. So we said that a type one is uh, we reject the null and the null hypothesis is actually true. Um, so in this case, it means that we would say that there is actually a difference in mean reduction um, of blood pressure for the two treatments while uh, there actually is not one. Um, so the consequences of the type one error is we're going to conclude that there is a mean reduction uh, in blood pressure from the two treatments um, in the context of the problem would state that the alternative hypothesis would then be true. Um, the mean reduction in uh, blood pressure when listening to music is greater than the mean reduction in blood pressure when sitting in the quiet environment. Um, and in this case, uh, we're going to have the clinic uh, offering free music therapy to their patients. So uh, the type two error, again, the no is actually false, but we failed to reject it. So we think that there is no difference. Now, the end of the question asks us, um, I wrote down here uh, which type, which of the errors is more serious, a type one or type two, but the question actually asks us to discuss which type of error you think is more serious. So again, like part one of this question, it's a little bit open to interpretation as long as you provide a great argument, full argument with uh, supporting details why um, that error is more serious. Um, they will accept the answer and give you full credit. So for the type one error, I'm gonna say that this type one error is more serious because the clinic is gonna offer free music therapy, which is going to cost them money, but there's, it's actually not gonna be doing anything for their patients. So the clinic loses its money by offering a free service that doesn't actually work. And then I personally think the type two error is a little bit more serious um, because essentially what the type two error is saying that they think they, the results of their study found that there is no difference in mean blood pressure after listening to uh, soothing music and uh, listening to, or uh, excuse me, sitting in a quiet environment, but there actually is. So in this case, I think it's more serious because the uh, clinic will not be offering a uh, potential 
life-saving uh, treatment for student uh, for subjects. So type two, again, more serious because the clinic is missing out on a potentially great treatment uh, for lowering blood pressure. Um, so it really depends on what the study finds, um, but those are the best designs for the study and these are the types of errors that you might encounter.